What's your sense of Bojo's popularity? Because there's been so much comparison between Boris Johnson and Donald Trump in the United States. And in the end, we saw when Trump went to the polls, he lost by a whisker. Do you think Boris Johnson's popularity at this moment in the UK has crashed so much that he has led his party to an electoral debacle? Or does he still have some traction on the ground? Well, nobody knows. Uh, what would happen, and we'll now never know, because we won't have that general election. Um, I wouldn't say that Trump lost by a whisker. I would say that Trump said he, he won, but he really lost pretty decisively, I think by seven or eight million votes, if I remember correctly. Um, what would have happened if Boris Johnson had been uh, uh, leading his party into a general election sometime hence? Nobody will now ever know what is certain is his party was well behind in the polls. The approval ratings for him in the polls were very low. He clearly, on that basis, lost popularity. The Conservatives had experienced debacle in recent by-elections. And the Conservative members of Parliament, um, particularly those elected in marginal seats in former Labour constituencies, but also others, began to be concerned that it would be a debacle. And the belief is enough to get rid of the Prime Minister. Remember, the Prime Minister is not an elected head of state like the US President. He's just the head of the government. And to be the head of the government, he has to control his party in Parliament. And if he doesn't have the confidence of his party, he's finished. Of all the leaders who seem to be in the reckoning to succeed Boris Johnson, what's your assessment of the probability of uh, someone coming in and taking over? Who do you think is most likely? Why? And how do you see the race at the moment? Well, I was just looking at a list. It's a very long list, about 10 or more candidates. None of them seems to have a decisive position, at least as far as the poly, the pollsters and the, the gamblers as well. There are lots of gamblers on this uh, go. Um, we, I see that Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, about whom we know very little, he's just become prominent because of the Ukraine war, is at the top. Um, uh, Rishi Sunak is also close to the top, the former Chancellor. Um, the, the list is really long. And what happens now, in the nor if the normal process is carried through, which I expect is supposed to be carried through by September, is that the, the House members, the House of Commons, will choose two of these candidates to put forward to the party members at large, and they will choose from those last two. So they're going to have to whittle down this number to two, and that's in successive rounds. It's just wildly unpredictable. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Wallace won because he would be sort of a safe candidate. He's a tradition, more traditional Tory with a uh, sort of more traditional Tory manner. But then, of course, the question they have to ask is would he keep the former Labour seats, which are so important for their majority? Uh, would he win back the, the middle classes who are pro Brexit, um, uh, sorry, anti Brexit? I think we really don't know what will happen, and we certainly don't know whether whoever takes over will have the sort of popularity that Boris Johnson had a few years ago.